Hey guys, it's Alyssa Marie here. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to touch on something that I get hundreds and hundreds of questions about daily, and that is all about hair growth. So I have done a video on hair growth. I shared a few of my top tips like earlier on in my natural hair journey, but I feel like at this stage, like I've learned a lot more and I can actually attest to some things that I have been doing religiously and consistently since the beginning of my natural hair journey. So I just wanted to do like an updated hair growth video. I'm gonna be sharing a lot that I've learned over this past year and a quarter or so that I've been natural, as well as things that I've learned from hairstylists, Diva Curl certified peeps, like I'm gonna be spilling all the tea, giving you all that I got. So if you're interested in hearing about all of that, then just continue to watch. All right, so first things first, I just gotta clear the air, get this out there. Hair growth is genetic. So the rate that your hair grows at is genetic. That is something that you're born with. It's not something that you can necessarily change. What you can do is make sure that your hair is in tip top shape in order to be able to grow as fast as it possibly can. So it's important to kind of not compare yourself too much to other naturalistas and their hair growth. Just because your hair isn't growing as fast as somebody else's hair does not mean that you're necessarily doing something wrong. It could just be that that's just the way that your hair is genetically wired. With that being said, it is a possibility that there are some things that maybe you are doing that can inhibit your hair from growing as fast as it possibly can. So really what I'm discussing here are some tips that will help your hair to be at its happiest and healthiest, because that's really the main goal. Once your hair is healthy and happy, it's gonna be growing as fast as it's genetically wired to do. So for my first tip is actually something that I have learned recently and I have actually tested on my hair and realized, holy shit, this is true. So my first tip would be to stop using heavy oils and heavy butters in your hair. Now, when I first started out my natural hair journey, I thought like, oh, give me all the butter, I need all the moisture, give me all the oils. I even did a little porosity kind of video as well, and for low porosity hair, they said, you know, you need to seal in the moisture with some oil and blah, blah, blah. But I have since learned different. So how you can think about it is that oil and water, when you try to put them together, they never mix, they just completely repel each other. And so when you're putting oil in your hair, it's actually gonna repel any other water from getting back into your hair. Especially when you are just continuously using oils on top of oils and butters and more oils. All you're doing is adding more buildup to your hair and that could actually in turn make your hair drier because there's so much like caked up on your strands that the water isn't able to get in and then you end up with dry hair that's just really upset with you and then it just doesn't wanna grow. I actually did learn this from a Diva Curls certified hairstylist. And at first I was kind of just like, mm, nah, my hair needs oil, like what are you talking about? But I actually gave it a try and stayed away from my heavier products and started using more light products like Diva Curl products, amazing. Camille Rose also has some really amazing products that are really moisturizing but not like a super heavy, heavy butter. Um, but I have noticed that my hair is much lighter, it's much more bouncy. It just seems happier overall when I'm not layering it on with all that kind of goopy stuff. Natural hair craves moisture. Water is moisture, so you don't wanna use oil and make that be a barrier in between your hair and the water that your hair needs so much. All right, and for my next tip is to do weekly treatments. And when I say weekly, I mean weekly. Like consistency is key when it comes to taking care of your hair. A weekly treatment will allow your hair to bounce back from maybe a rough week of styling, maybe you went to the gym for the full week, me, and your hair is just completely dried out. It's just like a nice boost for your hair and it fills it back up with much needed nutrients and I just think this is something that is 110% necessary. But you can't just do like a weekly treatment here and there. Like you can't wait for your hair to be like super dry and breaking off for you to then be like, oh, let me do a treatment. Like a treatment is something that you should do consistently. Ever since I went natural, I swear to you I have done a weekly treatment without fail. Like once a week, Sundays are my days, I just pick a day and it's just, I call it my self-care Sunday and the first thing I do is just take care of my hair. 
All right, for tip number three, I know this is gonna be hard to hear from some of you guys who really like to use straighteners and stuff, but I would say absolutely no heat zero heat to straighten your hair. I personally have stayed away, 100% stayed away from flat irons and from blow drying my hair straight, 100%. I made that decision from before I even big chopped, like I said, I was done, no more heat. I didn't wanna do anything that would jeopardize my natural hair. And to be honest, I feel like that has prevented my hair from a lot of potential damage. A lot of people with curly hair like to say, oh, you know, I only blow dry my hair like once or twice a year. But to me, I just feel like heat is heat. And once you have put that into your hair, it's kind of like, it doesn't matter how often you do it. Obviously, if you do it more often, then your hair is gonna be more damaged. But just because you only do it once or twice a year is also not like saying, oh yeah, it'll be fine. Because once you put the heat in your hair, that's damaging it, like right there. If you can, stay strong and just stay away from the straighteners. The only time that I ever have used heat in my hair is when I'm drying it with a diffuser. And even then, I kind of like to keep it on like a more warm setting rather than the fully like hottest setting. I really feel like that has helped my hair to stay very happy to stay very moisturized and bouncy and just in an optimum state. All right, tip number four is something that I noticed or started doing maybe halfway in my natural hair journey. So I went to San Francisco for my first trim and I found a Diva Curl certified hairstylist over there and she was the one who taught me the importance of finger detangling. When I went to her, I was super frustrated. I was having really frizzy hair and I just couldn't understand it. But what I learned when I went there is that the reason why I was experiencing frizz is because I was brushing my hair. So I had a Denman brush and every time in the shower, whenever I would put in a deep conditioner, I would then go through and brush out my curls. And I know it works for some people, but for me, it absolutely did not work. My hair was just a hot mess. Ever since I started finger detangling, my curl definition has been on fleek. Nothing else makes my curls pop as much as they do when I finger detangle. So I actually spoke to another Diva Curl certified hairstylist today about it. And I was saying, you know, like, what's your take on it? Because I know I see some girls use brushes and combs and stuff and their hair is perfectly fine, but for mine, it just didn't work. So I wanted to find out from him, like, you know, what's your thoughts? He was explaining to me that when you use like a comb or a brush, you kind of lose connection with your hair. So you can't even realize like how hard you're pulling it. And it just, it just can confuse the curls kind of. Like you don't realize how hard you're pulling in. It's just like a hot mess and you're like yanking hair out. You don't even know. Versus when you're finger detangling, you're kind of taking your time. Definitely have to do it into small sections. It is more time consuming. But for me, I have seen a major difference in my curls. My curl definition is popping whenever I just take the time to just go through and finger detangle. All right, tip number five is something that I've also just started recently and that is doing a full refresh of my hair twice a week. So like I said earlier, every week I do a weekly treatment. So that's one of my full refreshes of my hair. And then I'll do it like on a Wednesday or a Thursday during the week, I'll go ahead and completely drench my hair again. Not necessarily using a deep treatment this time because I kind of like to limit that to once a week, but I will use like a conditioner and then start the styling process over from the beginning again. Natural hair just really loves water, really loves moisture. Sometimes waiting like a whole week for wash day is just like not good enough for natural hair. Curly hair is just drier than regular hair. So when you're able to just give it that second refresh like in the middle of the week or so, it can do wonders for your curls. All right, for tip number six, which is last but certainly not least, I would say to trim your ends consistently about every four to six weeks. I can always tell when my hair needs a trim. It speaks to me, I swear to you. It's just not how it normally is. You just gotta listen to your hair. Like when my hair needs a trim, it gets a little frizzy, it's a little bit on the drier side, it doesn't last throughout a full week, like it just will lose curl definition quicker. So when I start seeing those things, I'm like, oh yeah, how long has it been since I've had a trim? So trims are super helpful because when you trim your hair, it helps to oxygenate the ends of your hairs. That sounds really fancy and scientific. 
but um, it just allows your hair to breathe more, your dead ends are gone, and it just gives it new life. And I've also noticed that whenever I get a trim, about like within that next one to two months after, my hair grows like a freaking weed. I don't know, it's like magical. You think like, oh, I have really short hair and I never wanna cut it because I want it to be super long. That can actually hinder your hair from growing if you don't get consistent trims. So you wanna go ahead and get those ends oxygenated and brought back to life in order to promote more healthy, happy hair growth. But yeah guys, that is it for this video. Super short, sweet, and to the point. As you can see, the main goal really is to just try and keep your hair as happy and healthy as possible. It's not a matter of saying, oh, what do I need to do to make my hair grow as fast as hers or grow as fast as hers? Like, it's not that, it's what do I need to do to get my hair as happy and healthy as possible. Everybody's curls are different, but I feel like these tips that I have shared with you in this video are a great starting point and they're quite general tips that everybody can use, everybody can try and see how that helps your hair. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. I've been wanting to do an updated video just based off of all of the questions that I get on this topic. So if you guys have any further hair growth tips, please go ahead and comment them below. Your girl needs to see them, other girls need to see them, we all need to see them. Let's just share all the hair growth tips down below, okay? As always, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, and also please do not forget to subscribe. Let's help my channel grow, y'all. We gotta do this together. Don't forget to also hit that notification bell so that you can know every time a new video drops. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I will catch you in my next video. Bye.